Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, persons of all ages, welcome to the most exclusive group in the wrestling community. And now, your hosts. First, from Toalaja, Puerto Rico, Macho Rodriguez, and his tag team partner. From Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, God's Gift, Tyler Taylor! Wrestling, we're doing another one of these Car Pod episodes, which is audio only. We're very excited for this Saturday where we will be live streaming our very first episode on YouTube. Um, we're super excited for that. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you think, Tyler? Are you excited for that? Definitely. Uh, I've been wanting to do that for a while, so I'm glad that we're finally uh, connected enough to be able to pull that off. Yeah, man. Definitely have to thank Mr. D. Rotten, the producer of the show. He has um, definitely taken us to another level, done a great job of getting us you know, further along. Um, we are more than grateful for what you've done for us, man. You've definitely improved our, uh, our show immensely. Absolutely. Glad to, glad to have D as part of the team. Glad to be part of his team. And uh, hopefully we can uh, just keep getting better. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, we're, we're now officially a part of the FamCast family, which is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, we've moved on pretty quickly. We've only done, uh, I'd say, about 22 episodes before we were picked up by a, um, you know, a good – company a good streaming company so uh we're definitely excited for the future but hey we are here for a specific reason we are going to do our summer slam recap with a couple of other bits we're going to talk aew all in we're also going to talk um some monday night raw and um we figure we'll do summer slam recap at the end of this at the end of the show so tyler is there anything you wanted to touch on first yeah i just wanted to say something that i noticed I was watching Raw this week, and then I've also been watching back some Raws from uh, the year 2000 when they had the uh, McMahon-Helmsley regime. Yes. The kind of heat that Dominic Mysterio gets is similar to what Stephanie McMahon would get back in those days. Whenever yeah. she would put the mic, the crowd would just start chanting obscene things at her. Absolutely. Um, and wouldn't let her talk, and she'd have to try to talk over it. And also... Um, the only other time that I've seen this that I can remember is Edge and Lita in uh, late 05, early 06. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm so glad you brought up the comparison to Edge because in my mind, Dom right now is the 98-99 version of Edge where he's just feeling out his WWE persona. You know, I, I feel like he's um, he's not fully developed as an in-ring performer. I think um, I made a comment about this earlier. When I was training this guy, Little Dixie, who was actually um, a Jersey All-Pro Wrestling champion at one point, he actually told me that you can love and respect people, but you don't need to mimic their every, everything in the, in the ring. I used to right. try to do Dean Malenko's, like, um, his specific, like, leg lariat. It was a really big – I always thought it was, like, the coolest-looking leg lariat, and I, I kept – trying to practice it and mimic it. And he was just like, look, I get that you like Malenko's uh, uh, move here, but just because you like it doesn't mean that you can do it. You need to come up with your version of a wrestler. That's what's going to get get you over with the crowd. And that's what we're watching. No one liked Dom in the beginning. And I think a lot of it had to do with, with it, his in-ring ability. He was trying to work Lucha. And he's not a Lucha performer. This is not what he is, exactly. He's, he's bigger than that, for one thing. Um, he's just, uh, I mean, in ring, he does remind me of an unpolished version of Eddie. Yeah. But that could be just because he steals his entire offense. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like the comparison you made to Edge because he's like, his skill set in the ring is like what Edge had when he first came in. It's a little rough still, needs a little yeah. polishing, but also he has the personality of the 2005, 2006, the ultimate opportunist kind of uh, yeah. personality. 
Absolutely. And I, and I believe that when it's all said and done after John, Dom has been like a world champion multiple times over, we will be looking at him and Rhea as potentially one of the greatest duos ever. Like in the light of like Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth and Edge and Lita and uh, Mark Merrow and Sable, we're going to be looking at these comparisons and we're going to be saying, wow, Dom is either above some of these or he's right on par with some of these as well. One of these things is not like the other ones. Who's that? Mark Merrow and Sable. Merrow didn't Mark- really raise, didn't really rise to the heights of those other guys, but Sable certainly more than well, made up for it. Yes, but Mark, fabulous Mark Merrow, like he was definitely talented enough. The talent he was there. Everything. He just yeah. unfortunately battled injuries his entire WWE run. Yeah, I mean, he definitely didn't have. Um, the luxuries that he had in WCW, his run in WCW was a hell of a lot better. But yeah, we won't we won't touch on that. We could, you know, Mark Merrill and Johnny be bad another day when we do like, you know, some kind of recap on the past. But uh, getting back to Monday Night Raw, man, I mean, what'd you think of uh, Rhea getting attacked by all of these women? All of a sudden, boom, we have tons of stories for her. Right, and it and it got a ton of people on TV that haven't been, so that's yeah. great. So that's great. Um, I think they uh, they went out of their way to give the women a little bit more focus than they've been getting. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Becky Lynch uh, drinking lemonade at the com- commentators table, which took me till I was today years old to realize why she did it. Yeah, and then the spitting, the spitting like Triple H, and then her tweeting about how it must be, it's harder than it looks. I mean, your yeah. terminology, it's chef's kiss. Like, she is absolutely, absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, she, she is just absolutely, like, she is the troll of all trolls. She knows how to, and to be quite honest with you, what a way, if we're just going to segue into Becky Lynch right now, and we'll, we'll come back to Rhea, what a way to start a Austin type of run if Becky is fighting for TV time and going out there trolling the boss this is what a phenomenal like uh, um, story this could possibly be yeah and I actually saw that suggested somewhere else that they should feud um, obviously they can't have a match because uh, Hunter can't wrestle and they don't yeah. WWE doesn't really do intergender um no, but so, he can he can definitely hand pick someone. Right, 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 right. They can feud, and it could be like Vince having, you know, at different points. He had the Big Show, or he had Kane, or yeah, you know, or Nia Jax, or Di- I mean, I mean, she's a pros pro. She's uh, she's gotten herself in really great shape. I'm sure she appreciates wrestling a lot more now that she doesn't have it in her life. And I'm sure the girls, like, it seems like she uh, she's actually broken kayfabe a lot and told the world, like, her and Charlotte and her and some of the women backstage have no heat, you know, that people don't know what they're talking about. She posts tons of photos with these women on social media, current photos, and maybe she has a new look on professional wrestling. And her and Becky have that history of her breaking Becky's nose. This can really work, man. Yeah, it could definitely work as a story. Um, I just don't know if she has it. But well, but in the in the context of like if if their match is like a brawl or something, she can hang there for sure. Yeah, I mean, no question. I mean, I look at it as like Stone Cold Steve Austin had really good matches with the likes of a Kane and early Kane, uh, uh, who was trying to like change his in ring performance because Isaac Yankum was already like a, a seasoned vet, but Kane himself, like he had to redo his in. Got good matches out of him. Got um good matches out of the big show. He had Bader. But I think it's just because it's really hard for, to let one of them lead. That That's the nicest thing I'm going to say about those matches. Yeah. um, Three of McFoley's best matches as well. No question. Yeah. No question. Uh, and and yeah. Becky Lynch is no question that the Austin of this era. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a great comparison. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. But but if we're segueing back to uh, Rhea, what I love is that it didn't stop on Monday Night Raw. So to be clear, to be clear here, we got 
Raquel Rodriguez was told by Adam Pierce that she will get her championship opportunity when she's cleared. So Rhea mm. Ripley goes out there. She's placating to the crowd, kind of like soaking in all the heat. And boom, back from behind. And wow, did, like were those some snug shots by Raquel? Only for it to get broken up, for her to like kick. I mean, just kick Raquel in the chest. I mean, you could see the way she fell over. It was a nice, really, really stiff kick. Um, and for her to throw Candice, LeRae, and Indy Hartwell, just throw them aside. And obviously, like, we know, like, you're not just going to do that to the Pixie. So Candice, of course, gets her heat back. And now she's given the rub to Candice, Indy, and Raquel. So what say you, like, what do you think about the way versus the Judgment Day? I think that would be an awesome feud, um, for sure. There's, you know, Johnny can work with anyone. Yeah. Um, we've already seen him and Finn have a great match on a NXT TakeOver. Yep. Uh, I'm sure him and Dom would have uh, phenomenal chemistry. Uh, Damien's a great worker, so I'm sure he could work with them. Uh, Dexter Loomis is underrated, I think. No question. Uh, it's a really fun character too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's it's a, it's a character that we've really been missing in wrestling, and we didn't know we were missing it because like Bray has a version of this character, like the creepy guy, but his is so theatric. Like like if you look at Dexter, his is more like toned down. Like it's just like the stalker who like stares at you from all these different angles. And his in-ring work, like you said, he's super underrated. Let me tell you, it is uncomfortable up close. Um, I first saw Dexter Loomis at an NXT house show in a tent with, like, eight rows of fans. And it is uncomfortable to to be that close to him when he's, especially as a heel in that gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm a a big fan of the way Johnny Gargano is one of those wrestlers I, I... Oh, man, I just wish he was just, as the song says, I wish he was a little bit taller. I wish he was a baller. Because, my God, would he be a top (laughs) guy if he was just a couple of inches taller. Or Shawn Michaels took over creative for the main roster. I mean, yeah, he is most definitely a Shawn Michaels guy. Uh, that That is a question thing. Uh, um, a lot of me wants to see him go back to NXT just so he can kind of uh, just kind of be like the lifer there. You know what I mean? Like you've 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 went you've went to the main roster. You've gotten some W's. You know what I mean? You've had like one or two feuds up there. It didn't work out. Go back. Do what Finn Balor did. Go back there. Go back and run all of NXT. Like you know, can you imagine the matches with him and Melo just feuding for a couple of pay per views? I mean, yeah, I'm there. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and there's no shame in that. Like, that's a great company, and mm-hmm. it kind of stands on its own at the moment again. Yeah. And yes, just like does. just like uh, Corbin going back there or when Balor went back there, there's no shame in that. Like, rather than languish at, in the lower mid-card, why not go there and, and be a star and headline and help people, you know, develop their careers? Absolutely. I love that. Um, but yeah, moving on from that, we have a fatal four way. Tyler, what did you think of this? This thing was awesome, bro. Yeah, man. This four guys that I just love, and yeah. I just to to finally see Chad Gable getting the you know rub that he deserves. Yeah, as just an incredible performer, mm-hmm. it, it makes me so happy. Yeah, I mean, if I can just uh, borrow from someone else's recap show, um, there was another podcast out there that uh, stated that the 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 love that was received at SummerSlam was Logan Paul and Ricochet. That that match was like like multifaceted; it crossed platforms, and that might, that match might actually help Ricochet's career like improved drastically and we saw it he was the start of the segment he right away 
jumped at the fact that he went in there like he lost by brass knuckles. Everybody saw it. You know, he wants like another shot at Logan Paul. So we know that this isn't over now. And um, I, I feel like Ricochet's always missed that one thing. And this could be it. Like Logan Paul, who would have thought a, a social media uh, performer can come to WWE and without knowing, because I'm sure Logan doesn't know he's doing this, he can make a professional wrestler. Because that's what I think he's going to do. He's going to make Ricochet. Yeah, absolutely, and and good for him because Ricochet, like you said, like you've said, and I explained this to my stepdad when we were watching the pay per view, um, from the Prince Puma days, like yeah, he's always been great. Yep, in the ring, he's just been missing a little bit something personality, and that seems to be coming through. I am glad he didn't win this though, because Gunther beat uh, Ricochet for the title. I believe that's who we want it from. And we've already seen Ricochet wrestle him again uh, on SmackDown. He won a like a tournament or a four way or, or something a few yeah. weeks, a few like months back. Um, and they've had good matches, but like it's not something we necessarily need to see again. Agreed, agreed. Something and honestly, newer and fresher. Yeah, I mean, we'll touch more on we'll touch more on Logan Paul and Ricochet and SummerSlam in, in just a bit, but if we could just um, kind of just wrap, we don't need to go through all of Raw, but we obviously have this, like, weird dynamic where babyface Seth Rollins has been kind of forced to team with his arch nemesis, his frenemy, would you say, in Cody Rhodes. And what a weird dynamic. I mean, what do you think of the, uh, WWE putting the two of them together, making them team? Did it feel a little bit like HBK Austin? So yeah, sort of. Um, I didn't think of that at the time, but that's a good comparison. I just think they really don't like each other very much. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like they're not completely comfortable uh, interacting. They work well together, but like, they if if there isn't just a little bit of heat between them, they're doing a great job of of, of portraying it because it just seems like, oh man, I got to deal with this. Oh yeah, you know, you know yeah. when there's that one guy that you're like, oh, I got to deal with this guy again. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly that's exactly how it comes off. Yeah. So this actually leads into a couple of storylines, which is super interesting. So one of the storylines is that Finn Balor doesn't come to confront Cody and Seth with the Judgment Day. He comes out on his own. We later find out that he's talking with J.D. McDonough, which we've talked about on our previous show, right? And yeah. we thought, like, what happened to J.D.? And now he's finally there, which it kind of gets the sense that maybe we were wrong all along. And I believe we talked about this originally, that Damien is going to be the guy who's kicked out of the group. It just feels more like Damien is the reason Finn's losing. He might manipulate Rhea and Dom into thinking, like, you know, he's the reason that we're, we don't have more. We don't have World Heavyweight Championship gold in our in our team. I don't believe he can cash in and win. Well, well, obviously, he what he is the reason. But anyway, well, no, he's not. I mean, if Finn Balor would just learn how to use the briefcase correctly, he'd be World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, well, why do you jump down off the apron right after you see your boy get stomped on the briefcase? Well, I mean, it, it, that's what happens. I mean, I think it's just one of those miscommunication things. But if we're going back to this, obviously we see Damien come out and he confronts them. Finn lets him know, like, hey, you know, I thought this is what we were doing. We were doing our own plans. We're not sticking to the plan. So I figured I would come up with my own. Weird moment uh, interrupted by Rhea, who is weirdly okay with J.D. McDonough saying his piece. And I find it, I, I found that so telling. It was almost like, huh, that to me was like an eye opener. Like, yes. okay, you know, why was she okay with this? This was fantastic. You know? um, Rhea's playing the irritated mom. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then JD comes up with, uh, what did he say? Something like, uh, it might not be in my place to say it or something, but that briefcase seems to be coming between you. So why don't you get rid of it? Does he mean like cash it in or like give it up? I don't know. Or defend it and lose it to Finn Bauer, which would just be, I mean that that can happen as well. Now, what I will say 
and I and I was saving this for our together podcast here because I wanted to make sure because I I feel like you're the only one that would attest to this. The way Rhea Ripley's being booked right now, if you look at everything she's doing on television, to me, and I mean this in the most complimentary way possible, it's a little faces of Foley. She's a different character every segment. Like you just said, she's the soccer mom. She's the brutalizer when she's wrestling the women. She is the side piece when she's with Dominic Guerrero. Everything she does is just, it's a different layer to her character. What, what do you feel about that? Did you do that on purpose? Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been trying to get it trending for a while now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she is the star of the show. Yeah, no question. Yeah, she is the star of the show right now. Yep. And uh, she's just doing an amazing job. Also, congrats, Rhea and Buddy. Yeah, absolutely. We're just going to, you know, peek behind the curtain a little bit to just give congratulations to Rhea Ripley and Buddy Murphy that got engaged yesterday, or Buddy Matthews. I don't really know which is, what's his real name. I believe um, it's Matthews, um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but, yeah, congratulations on their engagement. I, I honestly am so happy for them because through social media, through their uh, gaming platforms that they do, like Twitch and all that, the one thing we've we've seen for a very long time, I would say for a couple of years, is they've actually been really good friends. So their relationship, like, obviously, like, started as friends, and I love that they were able to turn into it. And to be quite honest, to see Rhea Ripley just break character and post that tweet and just be like, yes, yes, a million times yes, you can tell that this is, like, this is the love of her life. And, yeah. And, and good on him, too, because... Some people are, like, super insecure, and she is playing a very important role on television to try to make another superstar. And Buddy has not shown any signs, not tweeting, not commenting on tweets, nothing. He has not, like, shown any signs of insecurity uh, towards this character. He's just letting, like... (laughs) <laughs> the magic happened. He's just not, letting the magic happen and just being a part of the ride. Not murdering Max Caster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like maybe he got it a little bit. Like, like I don't. Like, I feel like that was. But Buddy's knees have always looked that brutal. So it's, it, you know, he's yeah. just a great performer. I, I was lucky enough to sit like in, I think like row seven at a house show where he was like wrestling Tyler, um, or Malachi Black. And I was like, "Wow! Like this is a uh, this is amazing. This yeah. match. like the two yeah. of them are. I, I I mean, I'm a little sad that they're on the same team because they work so well together. But you know, yeah. But moving on from there, we have um, WWE. Is, they figure out a way to get Sammy out of this match because we we hear that he's dealing with a lingering issue. If you've seen the still, it looks like his elbows just completely popped out of place." Which it just feels like WWE Tag Team Championships are just jinxed all together now. Yeah. But uh, uh, he, he's taken out of the match and replaced by Shinsuke Nakamura coming off a great win against uh, one of my personal favorites. I think yours too, Tyler, and Bronson Reed. Yeah, and, really like okay. Yeah, and um, you know, he replaces, kind of like puts himself in there. If we're fast forwarding to the end of the night, because uh, the only other thing that, that we could talk about uh, uh, is the return of the New Day and how exciting it was to have them back finally. Uh, they, they were definitely missed. Um, uh, it's really sad to see that, you know, Big E was told he can never wrestle again. That's one of the most brutal things I've heard. So sad. Just absolutely just heartbreaking. It, it is, uh, but just remember that we've heard that before from people and advances in medicine happen all the time. So yeah, if you but want- nobody... None of the other wrestlers were dropped the way he was. Like yeah. he was, he's lucky to not have the Darren draws off. You know what I mean? Like he, right. That was brutal the way he was dropped. So, um, but yeah, moving on to the main event, uh, the good guys get the W. I, Tyler, I did not see this coming. Did you see the Judgment Day losing here? Well, they always lose on Raw to some combination of those people. So yeah. Honestly, I didn't see it. It seems to me like, yeah, I, I just really thought this, like the the dynamic of Seth and Cody, would like that it would cost them. I thought we were going into a Seth versus Cody program. 
That's what I thought we were going into. So yeah, kind of where I was headed to, and then you know, and then we weren't. Yeah, and then we weren't, and and as uh, we're touching on there, we have uh, obviously we have Shinsuke Nakamura betrays the good guys and hits the King Shasa on Seth freaking Rollins and just walks away as Cody and Sammy are just, like, flabbergasted. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on here, man? Three just, King Shasas in one night, just beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. And I love that he does them from standing, too. Like, he doesn't he doesn't need to got to be, like, kneeling or sitting down. Now he's got them, like, standing. Like, he could do it from anywhere. Like, the way he caught Seth was definitely the most beautiful one. Um, yes. Finally. So, finally, this man is getting something to do. Yeah. No question. No question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for this. I think the two of them are just going to, like, completely rock this out. And, you know, you pointed this out on Monday to me in text that the entrances – you know, are two of, out of the three, or, or the three, including Cody, like the three best interests in the business. And now we're going to have two guys, the most flamboyant guys, the most skilled in-ring performers, uh, who are going to have wonderful attire. Uh, it, the, this is just going to be a really great feud. And to be honest with you, I do not think that Shin needs to talk very much here. No. I feel like if he's a heel, he could just be a silent but deadly heel. He can say a lot by just saying a little too. Like oh. he doesn't need to say very much. And uh yeah. I have to say that I've, the only time I've ever seen them wrestle, I didn't love it. It was at Survivor Series a few years back. But yeah. that could have been due to time and story and uh well. To be quite honest, like Shinsuke Nakamura was kind of like at the bottom of the totem pole, and he wasn't used properly. So he, like, I'm sure he was kind of like, I don't know, gassed out. Like, this sucks. Like, I'm, I'm not being I, used. Like, you know. I have heard for a while that he's been kind of phoning things in because he had his career over in Japan, and now he's just making that money. Yeah, no question. But. Well, uh, if they give him something to sink his teeth into, like, this should be – I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, no question. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for, uh, moving on from here, um, we actually – we should jump right into SummerSlam since we touched on some subjects anyway. Let's get started with the opening match since we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. We have Logan Paul versus Ricochet, and obviously Logan Paul needed to be first because he was getting on a plane – flying over to Las Vegas from Texas, or from uh, Detroit, I'm sorry, to go to his brother's was, fight. Yeah, it was to Texas from Detroit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And uh, he did make it in full did ring he? gear and everything. Okay, um, I didn't know if he made it or not. Yeah, he made it. He walked his brother down, uh, down, to, down to the ring. But what did you think of this match when you saw it? I mean, I thought it was really good. I expected it to be really good, and I thought it was really good. Yeah. I mean, it was exactly what I what I expected, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, um, we're going to use the um, – because I don't trust Dave Meltzer. I think he's an idiot. So I I think we're going to use, like, Wade Keller's star rating to just kind of go over this. Wade Keller actually gave this a four and a quarter stars. What do you think of that, man? Is that out of five? Yeah. Yeah, sure, right around there, four to four and a quarter, sure. That is – No problem with that. Silliness, man, silliness. I was like, wow. And, and to be quite honest, I had to watch it. Like, I watched the pay-per-view twice. Um, I, I did do a, a uh, um, like, a formal video with, uh, with Buy Comics. They, they kind of just had me kind of tag in. We met through TikTok, and they wanted my insight on some things. Uh, one, and we talked about it on the show. And I, I didn't really appreciate this match as much. After watching it back, I realized, like, I've been wrong, and I feel like this is my Seth Rollins all over again. Like, I wasn't early to the Seth Rollins party. It took me a little bit after. You were not, yes. Yeah, and um, I feel like that's kind of how I've been with Logan. Uh, I really, truly feel like Logan Paul should be a full-time wrestler. I I don't think he needs to do part-time. I think he needs to quit everything else he does in his life and just be a full-time wrestler. Because he could – 
I just feel like he would he he, he would main event WrestleMania. Like this guy would he can the sky's the limit with him. I really I really to, believe that. They would have to pay him a lot of money to get him to do that, but um but yes, I, I mean I think he's absolutely regardless of what you think about him personally yeah. mm-hmm. uh in the ring he's incredibly talented. Yeah. Um Especially for someone who has only been doing this for what, like, less than two years. Now, granted, yeah. this match was probably Macho Man DDP levels of planned out. Yeah, uh, yep. I know uh, before the match with Roman, he was working in the PC with Sean every day. So um, that that that's part of it, and you, you can't always be that way. But I mean, I think that's something that you will, if if you have it, and I think he does. Yeah. I think that's something that you'll adapt to. Yeah, no question. I, I feel, I feel, uh, I feel everything you just said there. He definitely has all the goods, and uh, I think I don't know if it was you that pointed this out or if somebody else said this, and I just saw it in a video. But he didn't initially like being booed. It was very oh, Ronda yeah. Rousey ish, where yeah. Yeah. she just kind of like hated it, and then now. He craves the booze, almost like Attitude Era or late Attitude Era Triple H, like where he he just wants to be booed out of the building, you know. And now, like you can kind of feel that. And I wonder if dealing with Hunter, like working with him directly, Hunter being like the most experienced person, like being one of the biggest heels in the history of the business, if he's kind of if he's kind of told him like, hey, this this is a major thing here, like you know, let these people boo you. They're talking about you. That's all that matters. Have you, uh, Hunter was on his podcast about a year ago. Have you heard it? No, I have not. No, it's, it's from like uh, the day of SummerSlam last year. Oh, okay. But yeah, check it out. It's I will. Very, I will. Very interesting. But anyway, n- enough plugging other shows. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, Ricochet came off really good in this match too. I mean, we talk about it all the time for them to let you work a celebrity guy. Although, like Logan, kind of feels like. It's a seventh match, and it kind of feels like he's no longer just a celebrity wrestler. It feels like he's more a part-time wrestler, which is a little bit above just a celebrity performer. Uh, I feel like Ricochet held his own really well, and I I would not be surprised if we start hearing reports that WWE is very high on him, and they're looking at him as, like, potential, like, we trust this guy, too. Kind of like Damian after the Bad Bunny match. Right. Yeah, I think that they're they're – quickly carving out who they trust to work with those type of people um, and keep it safe, but still make it look really good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, But moving on, we're going to go to the highest rated match of the night per the Wade Keller ratings, which is a four and a half star. And that is Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. Now I, I think I text you this the night it happened. This to me was the match of the night. Wow. I truly felt uh, like I, I loved every single millisecond of this match. What did you think of this match? I thought they told a good story. Um, yeah. I would not rate it that highly. I mean, I full disclosure, we all know Brock is not really my cup of tea. Um, that said, I thought he did a great job. Uh, I think this is as good as he's been since he's become the beast incarnate. He worked 19 minutes with Cody. That's the longest match he's had in years. It, yes, but a lot of that was Cody runs into the ring, Brock beats him up, and he goes and lays outside for nine seconds and does the same thing. That happened several times. Um, so that maybe was a little slow for me. I recognize the story they're trying to tell, that Cody's just not going to give up. Um, it was a good match. Yeah, I mean, to me, my only negative comment is Cody needs to learn to take a German suplex. He's going to break his fucking arm. Like, it's it's one of the easiest moves to take. Even The Rock would take it and tuck his head. Like, just hold his head. Like, flat out, just hold his head. I, I don't understand why Cody needs to brace himself by putting his left arm down. He's going to seriously land on that arm one day, and then he's going to be out for another nine months. I... I Anybody in the business that's backstage, I really hope they like pull him aside or Cody watches his match back and says, wow, I'm going to like, I'm going to ruin my opportunity to go to WrestleMania again because I don't know how to take a generic ass move. 
like it, it just it that really bothered me i remember thinking it and and what what pained me the most was i was watching this with my son right i was watching this with arthur and he was like why does he keep falling like that if a seven-year-old can acknowledge who doesn't know anything <laughs> that you're not bumping correctly i think that's a problem well, what do you think about the way he takes Germans? Well, I mean, I guess he certainly just knows that it's different from the way other people do it. So why is he doing it that way? Um, I guess I didn't really notice that. But if that's the case, that's not great. Um, thankfully, he won't probably be taking very many in the near future. Yeah, I mean, unless he wrestles Chad Gable. But uh, mm-hmm. but obviously, Gable does like his, his rolling thunder or whatever, like the, D, the Dean Morgan one. Um, the or, um, Not Dean Morgan. Douglas or whatever he I love the I love this match I loved in like all of it because what I loved about it was that like this was made to to get Cody to that spot where now he's ready to beat Roman and I I along with you was not really happy that he didn't beat Roman at Wrestlemania because I just really feel like the Roman story can carry on without the championship that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, I still feel like he's the top guy. Like, anybody who's the champion is not going to main event over Roman Reigns. He's going to be the John Cena to CM Punk. That's what's going to happen. He's going to be closing the show no matter what. So, I, in, in that case, I didn't think the title mattered to him. So, why not put the title on Cody? But uh, I, I, think, I also think we've kind of told the story at this point. Like, I think it's starting yeah. to wear thin. Oh, we're we're gonna get to that. We'll we'll get to that. we'll get to that at the end of this. But yeah, I mean, I just kind of felt like this match to me. What I loved about it, and and I, and I want to make this clear: this is not a rumor. You will not find this anywhere on Twitter. This is my personal opinion. I think this match was slated to go longer. I think the mishap with Brock Lesnar's clothes caused them to shut the match down quickly, and because they had time to fill, this is when I re- I believe that Brock Lesnar improv. I think he knew shit we still have a couple minutes to kill i can't just leave cody out here celebrating you know what let me give him the rub and he, cody looks so genuinely confused like he didn't know what was happening and it was it was just a special moment and and for me being that brock lesnar is like one of my favorite superstars ever i i was so happy with this being able to explain to arthur what giving someone a rub is like, you know, I, it was, sta- it was stated by, um, by another podcaster that this match, this is how you make a superstar. And Cody was made. So Cody can cut that promo. He does on raw where he says, I've overcome everything. I've overcome the beast. And I did it one on one. This isn't like the Joy Taylor thing where she says, why does everybody have to struggle to get a win? No, Cody did this by himself. He got an ass whooping, and he still won the match. Clean as day. And, you know, Brock gives him the rub on the way out, and I loved it, man. Brought a tear to my eye. Yeah, I, I, that, was certainly, that was a great moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this was really good. I just, I don't I think that's a little high is all. Well, it was the highest rated. I believe it was rated high. It was it was the highest rated match by, um, by uh, Wade Keller and by Bobo the Clown. So I, I believe that the both of them rated this as the highest on the show. And I, as much as I don't want to agree with, um, you know, Wish Doink the Clown, I'm gonna have to say that. You know, he's right, and so is Wade Keller. This, to me, was the highest-rated match of the card. I don't think anything comes close to this. I think you might hate, I think you might hate him more than Bruce and Eric do. Jeez. I, yeah, I think, I think, I think everything Eric Bischoff said about this and, and it, everything he said about him, I felt for a very long time, this guy ruins professional wrestling. He, he really does. But we'll talk, we'll, we'll dedicate a show to, uh, to Dave Meltzer another day. But uh, going, moving on, we're going to the Battle Royal. Uh, 12 minutes of whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's fine. It. It was, yeah, it was, it was meant to get LA Knight over. It did its job. Um, obviously, LA Knight moves right into a program the next night with The Miz. Uh, I love it. I love that this is, uh, this is a perfect way to get him over because uh, I'll let you 
talk about the Billy Gunn point if you want to take over from there. Sure. sure. So I want to do. I do want to say one thing about the Battle Royal. I yeah. did like that they kind of enhanced some stories mm-hmm. while they were yeah. doing it because guys would would end up fighting the people that they're feuding with. Like and Yamato it, and Bronson and AJ and Carrion. Yeah, exactly. I so yes. I, I did like that part. Um, yeah, so what I it was interesting because right before I watched Raw Monday night, I was listening to on my way home, we're gonna plug another show. Um, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. It was like a best of. And he was talking yeah. about Billy Gunn. They were doing the singles push and he won King of the Ring. And they threw him in there with The Rock, and he wasn't quite ready to be there with The Rock, and The Rock ate him alive. And it he never got that singles run again. I mean, he was the one Billy Gunn. He was IC champ or whatever, but that wasn't, I mean, he wasn't over. Yeah. Um. So what I liked about what they did on Monday, um, putting LA Knight with The Miz was, you know The Miz is going to take care of him. You know that. He's not going to eat him alive. You know, he's going to put him over. You know, when you leave a program with the Miz after beating him, you generally will be stronger than when you went in. So they're building him slowly, making him stronger, as opposed to throwing him in there and either swim or don't. Yeah. That's what I liked about that. Yeah, I mean, as it stated, uh, uh, they don't have to do a lot for LA Knight. I mean, let's just let's just recap his week for a second, real fast, before we move on to the next match. He wins the SummerSlam Battle Royal. He has an acclaimed promo segment with the Miz the very next night. Right? Mm-hmm. He received the honor of throwing out the first pitch for the New York Mets the next day. And currently in WWE shop for the third week in a row. He has the first, second, and now third top-selling shirt in WWE Shop. He had three of the top five, definitely had the first, but now he has the top three shirts, and now he he has his own hashtag, the Yeah Movement. I mean, (laughs) this is starting to get really fun. Beautiful. Really fun. I mean, because... And we're we're massive fans. Like we like I, I personally, I love Daniel Bryan. I love Bryan Danielson. Whatever you want to call him, I love that moment in wrestling. I love organic rises. Uh, uh, the Rock, just uh, when he finally becomes a babyface and people love him. I love all of this type of stuff. The Kofi run was a little bit harder for me being a Bryan fan, but I understood it, got it. Um, have defended the Kofi run on our show here, but. This is very exciting because I feel like we're wa- like this came out of nowhere. Like there's nothing that spurned this, Tyler. Like the Kofi thing was the gauntlet match, right? That was yeah. what started it, right? Brian was the 18 seconds. That's what started, it. and then getting screwed at SummerSlam to then follow followed up by getting screwed at Night of Champions, right? So do like, think, and- do you think it's having to be in that stupid Mountain Dew match and then doing the job? I don't know. I think a lot of people, we, we actually talk about it on our podcast, I believe, where we said, I don't know if it was this podcast or not, but we talked about it between me and you that, like, he definitely came out the winner. He lost the match and came out the winner out of that feud. Yeah. He hasn't done anything since, and he's just continued to skyrocket. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Uh, I had a, a Bray Wyatt thought, but we'll talk about it on a different podcast. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I think he is the first and only man to come out of a Bray Wyatt feud better than when he went in. No question. When he, went in, he wasn't really doing anything. No question. I cannot, I cannot disagree with anything. He you're was saying. a dude. Yeah. Now no he's question. that dude. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, if we're going to move on, we're going to move on to a surprising rating by Meltzer and Wade Keller with a two and a quarter star for the Intercontinental Championship match. I mean, this was, yeah, I mean, as uh, Eric Bischoff talks about this on their podcast where he says this match, it just suffered where it was placed. If this match was booked earlier, like if if it was like the second match, it might have been rated higher, but the match itself was just, it was a snug fest. I thought this match was phenomenal. I grew up a Lord Steven Regal fan. 
Um, I pointed out matches that Tyler should go back and watch, uh, like his matches with Sting. We love his Brian Pillman uh, memorial match with Benoit, his matches with RVD, with Chris Jericho. William Regal, uh, Ultimo Dragon, he's one of the best ever. These two guys work like that. Um, I don't know if it's a choice of his or not, but it looks like Gunther purposely stands kind of small next to Drew, so it looks like he's conquering a giant. Like, if you watch his, like, body language, right? It could be. He Smart if so. What? Smart if so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I thought this match was great. I love Drew McIntyre, and I love that uh, he doesn't show up the next night on Raw, so keep him away for a little bit. So that way he comes back and he can just start, r- like, running through people. Well, what what do you think about this match? I thought it was great. I loved it. Um, yeah. I'd give it at least three and a half, three and three quarters, personally. Yeah. Uh, I think they're both out of their mind. Um, I think, and as far as where it's being placed, I would have thought the crowd would be ready for something to sink their teeth in after the Battle Royal kind of being just about, but I guess with LA Knight winning, maybe that got them a little high and then they needed to come down. Yeah, yeah I mean. Makes sense. Um, while we're on the topic of, of Gunther, you know who's been impressing the hell out of me lately is um, Ludwig Kaiser. Thank you. Yes, I am so glad that you brought that up. I honestly don't think that anybody talks about him. And I love that you brought him up first because uh, I, it, it just like it shows what he's been able to do. Yeah, the segment uh, with, uh, with uh, Maxine on Monday, I was just like, hmm, there's something there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I genuinely believe that he... Uh, He's definitely either going to leave this group or he is going to, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to say it. He's either going to leave this group or he's going to be the guy to beat Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Almost like we talked about last week, which I feel like I'm just beating this with a dead horse, but um, like a triple A Shawn Michaels European title. That could be. um, That could be. Uh, and then Gunther goes on to bigger and better things. Yeah, I could see that. That's an interesting idea. Um, but yeah. but this is definitely been very like that whole group is very impressive. Um, but he's been really standing out lately. Yeah, I mean, no question, he definitely has been. Um, but yeah, if we're just gonna move on from here, let's talk about. Ah, uh, I don't really. I don't, I don't know. You don't want to talk about it? Up. You don't want to talk about it? Uh, we, we could just kind of talk, talk about it quick. Let's just talk about how terrible it was. What an awful way for Ronda Rousey to leave the business. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. This gets three quarters of one star. That's what this got. Probably. That This match was so clunky. And I, and I understand and I admire that Shayna pulled a Britt Baker and decided to go on the internet and and bash somebody for calling this match not a great match. By the way, I was mistaken. Wade Keller uh, rated uh, 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 Drew and um, and Gunther for, uh, four and a half stars. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, that that, that makes more sense. Oh, uh, four and a, four and a, yeah, four and a half stars. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I I don't know. To me, this was just. It might have been one of the worst, like, matches I've seen in a long time. And why they didn't use the Lions Den, why they didn't use the Dungeon Match, whatever they could have done to make this better, whatever they did do. They could have just not called it MMA rules and had a match where they both used their MMA style, and it would have been better because it would have just not been as restrictive. Yeah. Basically, they painted them into a corner, and there was, like I said to you uh, in a message last night, I feel like her whole run, the WWE, aside from her very first match, has not done Ronda Rousey any favors. Yeah. I and agree. that continued on uh, on Saturday night. This was uh, 
it wasn't good. And I don't blame either of the participants fully because I think if they had just called it a no holds barred match, they both use their MMA influences like they're going to do. Um, and they just let them fight. It's yep. a better match because you don't have the stupid, oh, there's no rope breaks. Well, there wouldn't be rope breaks. And it's just, I just think sometimes they try to get too creative with stipulations and it hurts the match. And this is an example. Yeah, of it. yeah I mean, I agree with you. Um, this is actually not what I thought you were going to talk about. I forgot it happened. That's how little impact it had on me. Sorry. Oh, what did you, what did you think I didn't want to talk about? The next one. The World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Oh no, we're going to talk about it because I feel like uh, I feel like I'm about to piss you off here. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Um. So this is the most polarizing match of SummerSlam. So now, first things first, I agree with Tyler. Tyler told me he thought this was, like, an amazing match. From what you saw trending on Twitter, they were calling this match of the night, right? Yeah. Uh, Dave Meltzer and Wade Keller said they, they, they have this slated as, like, a two-star match. Okay, well, they're both stupid then, so that's all I can I say. I mean, they're, it wasn't just them. Uh, Conrad and Eric Bischoff talk about it as well. They actually say that this match was the worst of any match they've had together. This mm, um, it certainly wasn't. There, I mean, I know personally how much you love Finn, you know, and stuff like that. But I, I honestly, when I watched the match, I, I didn't get what like when I was listening to that podcast, when I was like reading the ratings about this, and I was reading that pe- some people were like, "Oh, this match is just whatever." I saw a lot of things about how the crowd wasn't into it, but they were probably gassed out. Gunther and Drew's match drew a lot from the crowd. Cody and Brock's match had the crowd rocking. L.A. Knight had the crowd rocking. The Logan Paul Ricochet was like wasn't a spot fest. It was a classic wrestling match. Really nice. Um, the crowd so channel. Was- the crowd channel for both guys in this match. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice any of the negativity. So yeah. when I when I see people saying this stuff, I was like, man, do I need to go back and watch it? And I went back and I was like, okay, I don't, I don't understand. Like, the only uh, thing you could say was that it was overbooked with interference. Judgment Day. Uh, that's the only thing I could say they could take away from the match. I thought it was much better than the Money in the Bank match. Um, personally, I have never. One time before have I ever been so angry with you in my entire life. Why? Because you had me convinced. You had me believing that it was going to happen. Me too. I felt the same way. I honestly, when I, when I, when I posted that video the next day and I said, I was like, if not now, like it's never going to happen. I genuinely feel like, and I mean this with, with, Every fiber of my being, he is Dolph Ziggler of this generation. They are they look at him as like we can like slate him in. He's gonna have a banger of a match, but we're not gonna push him. And I don't understand the logic behind it because the minute that shoulder tore, man, the minute that shoulder tore. What? Yeah, yeah, no question, absolutely. But the problem is Vince isn't there. He's out. He's gone. He's dealing with the FBI or whatever the government. Triple H is a guy who believed in in Finn Balor. Now, the only thing I can say, which I know that this is going to come off as very negative, and it might actually hurt the way you feel about Seth, it does seem like Triple H is pushing his people, and Seth Rollins is his guy. He has been on the guy at all. Seth is amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like he just doesn't feel like Seth. Like, he he definitely is all about long-term storytelling. He doesn't want Seth to drop the title yet. Maybe we've all been wrong. Everybody thought he was going to drop the title immediately. We don't know. So maybe he keeps the title for a link, like, you know, for a long amount of time, and Damian uh, doesn't cash in until, like, next year after Mania or something, like the Monday night after Mania or something like that. 
or if Finn wins the briefcase, maybe he cashes in in the future. Yeah, the so the uh, reason you know, the reason that I was upset is I feel like if because. I heard everything that everyone else has heard that Seth's heard. He's dealing with these injuries. Yeah. If he has to give up the title, I feel like Finn over just about anyone in the company has earned it. He's done everything that's been asked of him. He's done it well. I know you don't agree necessarily. Um, but, and for years, and he's done it for seven years. He's gone back down to NXT. He's put people over. He's been the main event to do the job when they've asked him to. Um, he helped save that show that everyone got syphilis or whatever it was. I think it was um, hepatitis. Uh, when hit with him and AJ. Um, so yeah, I felt like he deserved it. Even if he only keeps it... Well, I don't like the word deserve. I felt like he'd earned it. Even if he only keeps it for a couple of months. You know? Well... So I have made a comparison with Finn Balor for a very, like I have made the wrong comparison. I, I'm going to come on here and I'm, act, I'm actually going to say that I've made a terrible comparison. I've compared him to, to Bret Hart and I've actually, I'm actually wrong. Finn Balor is the sting of this era. And he, let me explain myself. Sting was not about politics. Sting was about, I'm going to do what you ask me to do for the betterment of this company. And there are four podcasts dedicated to talking about this version of a sting on Eric Bischoff's 83 weeks, four different podcasts where he talks about how like the reason sting didn't keep the title for longer or why he didn't have more title reigns, even though he, he does, he's a 15 time world champion people. Um, but the reason he doesn't have more of, of um, the, the reason you don't think of the title more when you think of sting is because he wasn't one for politics. He was business first. He was company first. And this is why I feel about Finn, because I feel like him not being, like, you know, put, like, you know, marking out for himself in the back is why he's not world champion. He's doing exactly what Drew, what uh, Dolph Ziggler did, where he's just like, all right, that's fine. I'll have the most matches in WWE. I'll be out here. I'll do whatever you need me to do. You want me to be heel? I'll be a heel. You want me to be a face? I'll be a face. Whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do. And I just feel like that's such a fucking waste. Like, I, I do, I'm, what? The only thing I've got to say is I know that Dolph Ziggler, words, Dolph Ziggler was very handsomely compensated for that. And I hope for sure as hell hope that Finn is as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk about somebody else's wallet, but I understand. I'm not either, but I know Dolph was one of the top paid guys in the company and, if Finn is going to be in that role, he deserves to be as well. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I guess what I want to say is like, I, I don't know how to say this. I hate heel Finn Balor and not the way you're supposed to, not like a Mark. I just don't think it's good television. I don't buy anything. He says, I mean, I've, I've said this, I've said this to like real, like wrestling minds. Like I've talked to them, like, and I've been like, I just don't believe it. Like when he cuts baby face promos, like if you if you go back and you look, you can go on Google and transcript promos where you can read them. Every promo this dude cuts is a baby face promo. Yet I, he's delivering it like a heel, and that's why I don't find it believable. I Heels think something that you and I disagree on is that the heel has to believe that they're in the right and has to have reasons for what they're doing. And he does. Yeah, but not not the way it's being portrayed because it almost feels like he is like like when he says like seven years you took away from me, like you know, you 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 stopped my momentum, like that specific promo, I feel like if he was a baby face right now and he cuts that promo, there are people chanting for him like Daniel Bryan. Yeah. There are people chanting for him like Sami Zayn. I get and, that. You know, I don't, I just what? don't, I don't believe it. It's just not, I don't know. It, it's just so the, difference is, the difference yeah. is, as a heel, as a baby face, you cut that promo and yeah, they're chanting your name. As a heel, yeah. you cut that promo and they're like, get over it. 
you've had all these opportunities to come back and you haven't done it. It's your yeah, fault. I didn't feel that way. All I felt like all the only and it's the same question. Now I know it's been stated by wrestling minds in the past that like, you know, that they're supposed to leave you with questions, so obviously it's working, but and when it when he cut that promo, I was like, Why? Can I ask you something? Why did you cut that promo? Can I ask you something though? Sure, go ahead. If you didn't know if I had not if I never told you about my interactions with Fergal Devitt, would you feel the same way about the guy or would you be more believable to you? No, I I, I feel like he is a natural baby face. So it has nothing to do with the fact that you know that he's just a really nice guy and Yeah, yeah, it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with that. No. Okay, I, that's something that I wondered that I don't know if I've ever asked you. No, I I feel like his interviews, I feel like his um his interactions with fans all around the country, uh the videos he posts with his wife, like I don't buy. He really his, is he's truly is a prince. Yeah, he's just like such a lovable guy and I feel like this is just one of those things where it's not it doesn't work. He's he's fine, he's a great performer, he's an awesome pro. He, but it just, to me, I don't feel it, man. I don't feel it at all. It doesn't make me feel either way. Like, all I think of when he comes out, I'm just like, all right, well, like, where's Rhea? Where's Dirty Dom? Like, you know, what? what's, you know, what hand is Damian Priest holding the briefcase in? Like, these I mean, are the I questions. feel like we're going to agree to disagree on this. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. All right. So, moving on from here, um... We'll just touch on this quick because this match, this match I thought was the second best match of the night, but I'm so annoyed by the outcome. I, I just can't. Which outcome? I, Part of I, it. Uh, the first one. Which yeah, is, um, I do, uh, and, and then to see the report the next day, all right, let me, let me just be transparent. Bianca Belair wins the triple threat match, which was a solid match. It, 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 was, it was a match of two halves. The beginning was just them feeling each other out. Obviously, Charlotte and Bianca don't, haven't really worked each other a lot, so I think this was like one of those things. And I and I fear that these two just are not going to have chemistry. Everybody wants them to have the greatest match of all time. I just don't think that Charlotte can do that with Bianca. They work a very similar athletic style, and I don't think it's going to mesh well. But I really thought Charlotte was here to take the loss. I never once thought Charlotte was going to win. I for sure thought, especially when they started pointing it out about her streak at SummerSlam, I was like, they're, they're only doing this so we know that it's, the streak is going to be broken today. That's the only reason. And Charlotte started talking about it. So I for sure thought Charlotte is in this match to take a loss so Asuka can beat Charlotte and keep Bianca, like, strong. Right. Nope. That's not what happened. We had an overbooked knee injury that annoyed the shit out of me because I was like, oh, whatever. I don't believe that you're injured. This is just your super Cena shit. I just, I, I didn't buy it, didn't want it. I love Bianca. I don't, I don't think this match did, any, did her any fucking favors. At not at all. Not at all. She's phenomenal. Um, and it just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't help. And Asuka is, again, I don't like to use the word deserve, but I feel like she deserved better. Well, when I, well, here's the thing. If we get to the end result that we got, which is EO coming out, cashing in the money in the bank, if that's the end result we're getting, then I, w I love the idea that Asuka's the one who drops the strap to, to EO because of what Asuka means to EO. Right. There are there are interviews out there of what Asuka means to people like EO and Kyrie Sane. Like she means something to those women. Man, like, I can't wait to get the girl back. Yes, yes, that's that's gonna be awesome. But um also if I if I could just say two Japanese women's champions right now for both companies. Craziness. Uh mm -hmm. love that. Uh Tony Storm did lose the title. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Good. Um but, yeah, so if that's the end result we get to, I'm excited. I love the moment, the fact that Dakota's there and Damage Control gets, like, their first world title. So, like, and, um, and EO has been the one who's held everything. She's been tag champ, and now she's the world champ. Like, this is great because she's definitely the most talented of the three. Um, yeah, she's awesome. 
And, you know, people have been talking about her for years. And she's finally getting her shot. Uh, so super excited that she has a great mouthpiece like uh, Bailey. What I'm really looking forward is to, like, the weird dynamic of, like, Bailey accepting random challenges for this title on EO's behalf. I think that's going to really add <laughs> some layers to this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just – the report came out the next day when it was asked, uh, and I believe it was it was Bobo Brazil or Bobo Bobo the Clown that actually said oh, – Bobo Brazil. Yeah, actually, well, he's a professional wrestler. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to be disparaging to Bobo Brazil, so I'll just say Bobo the Clown. It was actually him that said that the reason for Bianca winning and losing the title 95 seconds later was just for more title reigns. So they could just say that she's a multiple time world champion. And I just, that annoyed me even more because I, I really feel like WWE is doing Bianca no favors. It's almost like they're ruining the product that they have. She can wholeheartedly be the best in the fucking world at everything with fans in the ring, storytelling, whatever. And I just feel like they don't, Really, they don't protect her the way they should. Even making her like super invulnerable, like invincible during yeah. her reign. It, it just don't, I don't understand what the story is that they're telling. But I feel like what you're doing is you're making people dislike you unless they said, we want her to be polarizing. Yeah, and that's the thing. Exactly. Polarizing is the right word. Because unless you're a particular fan of hers... Um, you're you're gonna be annoyed by it because like I can say that she's phenomenal and still say that I just have never really liked her. Like I've never been a fan. Um, I don't really know why. It's just she's never been for me. Uh, yeah. but she's still phenomenal. But when she's being booked like John Cena, it's gonna make me like her even less. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um. But yeah, moving on, let's move to the main event of the evening. Do we have Wow. To? Well, here's the thing, guys. There comes a there comes a moment in a there come there comes a moment in a storyline where you have reached the limit. And when this match and this build has been compared to the 99 and 2000 NWO, that's a problem, people. That's yeah. a major problem. Because as we know, the 99 and 2000 NWO had no end in sight. They just stopped being the NWO. It just, like, went away. And I hate to say this, but the bloodline misses Sami Zayn. Yes. This? This was awful on so many and, – and I've said on here and I've argued with Tyler, so I know this is going to – this probably sounds really weird coming from me, Tyler, hearing this. I have never come out of a Roman Reigns match thinking to myself, that's the worst match this dude has ever had. Uh, let me tell you this. I was having a really good nap right up until Jimmy interfered. Uh, listen, I, to be, <laughs> I watched eight minutes of this match on my break. Uh, um, I had to work on Saturday night, so I didn't get to watch from beginning to end. But I got to watch the whole thing the next day. It was 35 minutes of just m mediocre performance. Like, I th I don't know how to say this. Um, it feels like Roman's tapped out. It feels like he, he's just not with it. Like, almost like he's tired of feuding with his family. Right. And, and like, because this match was so bad, Tyler, I don't think the moment that we got at the end of the show mattered. I don't. I don't think people care. Yeah. Um. And the build was so lackluster too. The only, the this is. I'm gonna compare the build to this to Charlotte and Rhea from Mania, except that the match didn't deliver. Yeah. Um. The only time I cared about this feud was the promo that Jey Uso cut um, when he declared the tribal combat. Yeah. When he was talking about, you got Jimmy, so I got to get you. And so like that, that's the only time that this feud has felt 
intense. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I just don't care anymore. So here's the thing. On July 1st, 20, uh, uh, 2023, the episode of SmackDown where the match was set, right? The tribal combat rules were stated. No disqualification, no count out. The only way to win is by pinfall or submission, and no one can interfere until the match was over. I genuinely thought the thing that Tyler, I don't think he's actually said it on our podcast here, but Tyler's been talking about this for, I feel like, a year, which is this Black Panther storyline. I genuinely thought this was going to be the two of them going at it with Roman obviously winning the match. No one expected him to lose. That would have been a massive shock. No one expected him to lose this match. But after he wins, when J- when Jay is forced to acknowledge him, then he catches a beatdown. And just when you think his brother comes out to help him, he comes out to betray him as well. That, I think, plays better than what we got. Because... Every, literally every Joe Schmo on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, predicted the the ending of this match. Everyone knew that his brother was going to come betray him. It was just like, okay. It was so anticlimactic, it it felt forced. And I don't know, I genuinely thought to myself, I... I don't care. I, I'm not interested in watching this two, these two work each other. Because besides Brett and Owen, we don't have any good brother versus brother matches. Like, they're just, they're just not very good. The best you could say gimmick brothers would be, like, maybe one Edge and Christian match. But, like, okay. Undertaker versus Kane have never given us a good match. They've been, like, snore fest. It's like watching, for some reason... Kane goes from being a really good, solid brawler style big man, and then when he gets in the ring with the Undertaker, they both look like Giant Gonzalez. I don't understand what the hell happens, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't understand. I, I'm sure these two are going to be. They're going to be great because their their moves are exactly the same. Everything they do is exactly the same thing. And um, they'll probably set a Guinness Book of Records for super kicks. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to, to reiterate, to kind of touch on the Black Panther storyline since you brought it up, um, when I saw the movie Black Panther, I thought the where the you know the long lost relative comes and challenges him for the for the throne or whatever. Yeah, was, uh, it would yeah. be a great it would be a great wrestling story. Storyline, and then after Mania, when there didn't like, it seemed like this had kind of run its course. I was like, I feel like that's the only place there is to go, is to have one of the, whether it's Solo, Jimmy J, preferably J, challenge him for the you know the the tribal chief, yeah. uh, just like that movie. And um, so that basically what they did, but then you know, it sucked. So sorry, guys, my fault. No, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. Yeah, I mean, I, I posted uh, when I gave my reaction video on TikTok. I said this was an underwhelming show. I was not super excited. This was like almost five hours, guys, and. It was like nine matches. Like, that's 17 minutes of recap and video packages. Why Trish and Becky couldn't get 17 minutes to work is beyond me. Um, I mean, some of the, the video packages and stuff was needed. But I don't think Roman and Jay needed to go that long. No. Um, no. They went 35 minutes. The triple threat with the ladies went like almost thirty minutes. Yeah, they could have probably uh, shaved seven or eight off of there. They could have shaved probably. 
they probably could have carved out enough time between those two matches for Trish and Becky to have their match. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just so strange. But, yeah, I mean. So- I thought the show overall was, was fine. Yeah. I enjoyed most of it. Um, I didn't enjoy Shayna and and Ronda only because of, like I said, the restrictions that were put on them. Uh, yeah. I didn't enjoy the main event, and I was pouting throughout the whole ladies title match. So, yeah, I mean, that's not their fault. I was just sad. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> I don't know. It, it, my biggest takeaway from this is clearly we're headed into someone getting kicked out of the Judgment Day. Uh, that is clear that that's going to happen within the next game one Priest because he's not a team player. I don't I don't even understand how that's possible. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I feel like he 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 won. I mean, it's very it's very clear. He said it to, to Finn Balor's face like you just can't win like you're a loser. Yeah, I can't win when you wait till I get hit with the briefcase and then you drop off the apron. Yeah, I mean, what's distract the referee long enough? Distract the referee long enough for him to use the briefcase on me and then drop off the apron. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the story that's told to us, I don't, I don't. It feels so convoluted. I mean, if I could just touch on that, when the Judgment Day came out and Finn Balor lost, I immediately, when I watched this, I was like, okay, I need to rewatch this. So I rewound it, and I rewatched the whole segment, that that whole part from the ending of the match. And I thought to myself, this feels like they purposely cost Finn Balor the match. Almost like, we don't want you to be our world heavyweight champion. We don't trust you. That's what it felt like. But then Monday, the story that was given to us was like, it's Damien's fault. And I was like, well, two days, two different versions of this story have been told to us. Well, it felt like Finn thought it was Damien's fault, and everyone else was like, look, we were there to help you, and it just didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's one of those things. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, clearly, clearly somebody's getting kicked out of the Judgment Day. It, it we from the beginning, everybody thought it was going to be Damien, and then as it progressed, we thought JD would come in and take Finn's place because Finn is like he would be the the right choice to be the next babyface. For some reason, uh, they just want Finn to keep losing, so they're just going to keep him as a heel. Uh, I really thought Finn because I thought this was the quickest way to get the title on Finn Balor. I really did. I'll be honest, the story that I want to see happen is I want to see Finn get kicked out of the group. I want to see Damian run through the Raw roster as World Heavyweight Champion to lose the championship to Finn Balor at WrestleMania. That's what I want to see. But Yeah, that, you mentioned that in a TikTok the other night, and it made sense to me um, as a possible long-term uh, where we're going. But uh, we've got a ways to go to get there if that's the case. Yeah, but there's so much time. Like, WrestleMania is so far away. Right, so we've still got a whole lot of layers to unpack. Yeah, which is why I believe Finn should be the guy. Like, now, if the story is told to us that Damien gets kicked out, as I do air quotes since this is just an audio pod and you can't really see me, um, and for some reason it was all a plan to let Finn feel comfortable so they could betray Finn, then then I feel like that adds a layer to Finn like ultimately either winning the Royal Rumble or winning the Elimination Chamber to get the spot uh, for the WrestleMania match against Damian Priest. Uh, yeah. Dave, go ahead. The concern I have, if Finn were to be the one kicked out and turn babyface, is they have not done much with him as the babyface post-injury. He wrestled Roman, but come on, nobody ever thought he was winning that. But he was, but the the see that's the thing. He Vince was running the show, and Vince lost faith in him when that injury happened. But Triple H has never lost faith in him. He's always because Triple H has overcome injuries. He knows that you can still be over or or more over than you were. 
so he he gets it. Yeah, but, and I know uh, what you're saying, but like I, you know, I I I've, I've been hurt before, so it's hard for me to to trust. Yeah, I I understand what you're saying. It, it, <laughs> I, I, I will say what I am uh, what I am is excited for the stories that were told to us, and whether anybody likes it or not, the best stories in pro wrestling right now are Judgment Day related. It's either Dom and running through NXT or Rhea and the women uh, of the Raw roster and now Lyra, who was supposed to be like her, like she was supposed to be Lyra's mentor. And now Lyra's kind of attacked her. Like, you know, now it feels like that's like the feud that we all want because Lyra's a hell of a performer. So I I definitely want that. And, um, you know, obviously the Damien and Finn thing. Like, I'm more excited about this with the added element of J.D. McDonough. I think this is going to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, We'll just touch real quick uh, on AEW. We'll just shift gears. What do you think so far of the card that's being presented to us? Uh, I love how they've gone old school. I don't know if you've been following them on social media, but now they've been posting still shots of specific wrestlers saying that they're all in, kind of going old school. I haven't seen that, but that's great. Yeah. So um, Sting is all in now. Tony Storm is all in. Uh, Darby Allen's all in. Uh, uh, they've kind of gone through the roster, told us, like, who's all in. We're, we're having some sort of uh, women's match where four-way. they're having a little, uh, yeah, four-way. Tony Storm already has the bye, so she's in the match. The world champion is in the match, and then, uh, so far, it looks like uh, either Britt Baker or uh, Blue uh, is going to be in the match. Of, I believe one of each, uh, either Britt or I don't know, I forget who Britt's wrestling. Um, and Sky Blue is wrestling someone, and I think they'll probably both qualify. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no, like, Chris Statlander or Willow or anyone to kind of throw a wrench in it, so... It looks like it'd be those two. Um, so that should be, you know, there'll be four people. So they got everyone has a chance to do things and there's time to rest. And those are always good matches. Um, obviously, Cole and MJF is going to be a good match. But before we get to that, they apparently are going to be facing Aussie Open for the ROH titles on the same night. Yeah, I and mean, that should tear the house down. That may be the match of the night. Yeah, possibly. I think I think there's a there's a real case to be made that Aussie Open might be the best tag team in the world. Yeah, I mean, now that the Usos aren't a tag team anymore. Right, and I th- I mean I think they're better than uh, as good or better than FTR. Although FTR has had some just incredible matches on Collision. Give those guys time and let them go and. It's been magic. Yeah, I mean the supermarks are really awesome. They're fine. Um, they're they're really good at copying other people's moves and not having any original like um, skill set in the ring. It's 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 kind of like playing SmackDown versus Raw, like picking your tag team. They're super generic. They're like the creator wrestler when you're trying to find your move set when you're creating your own um, wrestler for SmackDown versus Raw or WWE 2K. That's how I feel about them. Uh, they're fine. So I mean, pretty much, you're just saying you just you, you don't you're not excited about this at all. You don't. No, I just don't. I don't like. I don't like FTR. I don't. Okay. I don't think that. You don't yeah, think no, every, every, incredible what? matches the last month on Collision. I think they've. I think they've. They've had the luxury of working really good talent. I think. Uh, I want to see them work a shitty team. Let me um, see them. They wrestled me... Big, Big Bill and Brian Cage the other night. Those aren't exactly uh, Ricky Steamboat. But you're uh, this is one of those Finn Balor things. Like I really feel like you just don't like anybody that's over five foot ten. No, they're I, fine, I, but they're not. They're not fine. Brian Cage has been widely Brian Cage considered. Is, is one of the most underrated performers in the business. There are tons of people that talk about 
yearly why he's not in WWE. What did he do? Is right. he on steroids? Is that why he's not in there? He's like a generational talent. I don't know what it is. Big Bill, Big Bill would be Andre the Giant of this era if he wasn't an idiot. But he is. He, he's, he is no without question. Big Bill is the best in-ring performer, big man, since Bam Bam Bigelow. His in-ring work is so stellar. He, I remember when he wrestled that four-way. That was the guy they were building. Yes, Kev, Kevin Owens got the shot because, you know, character-wise, he was ready. But there was a lot of people, including you and I, that thought he might win that title that night. I remember you telling me I wouldn't be mad at it. Mm, those are those are only words that you've ever said to me. I wouldn't be mad at it. I don't remember saying that, but I wouldn't have been surprised by it because they were high on him. Yeah, I mean he he's a great he's a great wrestler. He he does a really good job in there, and he and he doesn't wrestle small except for obviously like five foot seven MJF body slamming him. Why that is free on television makes zero sense to me. I just think they've looked; those guys have looked pretty clunky in some of their recent matches, and maybe it's who they're working with. And well, then I, the, I mean, the other night, they looked like a million bucks. Well, to be quite honest with you, I think if I was a promoter in professional wrestling, I would. You know how Vince McMahon had banned words, like yeah. you can't say this. You know what I would ban in pro wrestling? I would seriously dock people's pay. Wrestling in jeans. Yeah, I think it should be a certain gimmick for certain people only. No, I think Diamond Dallas Page should be the only person we think about of jeans. That's it. Not John Moxley? No. John doesn't wear jeans. He wears those, like, they're like army fatigue pants. But yeah, he he normally wears those. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I didn't like when Dean Ambrose wore jeans, either, and he didn't like it either. He talked yeah, about yeah, it in his book. Yeah, like, he yeah, thought when he looked... Yeah, yeah. yeah, he thought he was going back to Trunks. And then he got... And then they were like, no, we're, you're going to wrestle in jeans. You're going to look, you know, like it's a street fighter. It's like, what? Anyway, um, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's one of those things where uh, we we definitely need... I want to see more from FTR. I don't. I don't want to see. I don't want to see this. Like I need to copy like the Heart Foundation, and I need to copy CM Punk, and and I need to like do all of the Bret Hart moves. Like, dude, show me your stuff. Like, where is your offense? Like, let's start with your finisher. Your finisher's awesome. Why can't you capitalize off that? I don't know. I guess the drama of the matches that they've had has just been maybe what caught me. Because I don't, uh, before this run, I wasn't as enamored as I am. But like the last few weeks, the the matches that have been on collision have all just been incredible. Yeah, I agree. Well, guys, we've talked your ear off enough. Uh, We give you almost 90 of uh, some recaps of the week. Uh, We are super excited for our live stream and our part two of the Heartbreak Kids Shawn Michaels this Saturday. Um, We will most definitely be delving in. It'll probably be a pretty lengthy podcast because we want to pay proper respects to, you know, the greatest of all time. And we want to do that in the most respectful way possible. Should I break out my chat? What? Should I break out my chaps? Sure, yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like a plan. I mean, uh, yeah. So, guys, uh, we look forward to uh, interacting with you. So, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter or X, it's Must Wrestling. And if you want to interact with us, you can interact with Tyler on Twitter, which is Grizzly Canadian, or me, uh, Boricua Lu, on TikTok. And uh, until next time, we're out. Out.